Yo, <laughs> what's going on everybody? It is exactly 1.15 p.m. Eastern Time, 2012, March 19th, Tuesday. No, Monday. Yeah. How was work? <laughs> I'm working right now. But anyway, um, I can't say I'm reading this book because I've already read it when I was a senior in high school, like, outside of school, duh, um, I listened to it, I read it, I'm reading it again four years later, so I'm just, I can't introduce this as a book that I'm reading, it's just, this is just one of the books that I'll be reading for the rest of my life, I put it like that, alright, here's this book I'm memorizing, <laughs> this nigga's memorizing books, <laughs> anyway, you know, I'm going to skip through chapter 5, Specialized Knowledge. Because that's a term that most of y'all just know nothing about. And I'll say it, and you'll look at me like I'm stupid. Nigga. No. Alright, we're going in. Ah, specialized Knowledge. Personal Experiences or Observations. The fourth step towards riches. <laughs> there are two kinds of knowledge. One is general, the other is specialized. General knowledge, no matter how great in quantity or variety. Shit. It's a very peaceful afternoon, too. Alright, chapter 5, specialized knowledge. Personal experiences or observations, the fourth step toward riches. There are two kinds of knowledge. One is general, the other is specialized. General knowledge, no matter how great in quantity or variety it may be, is of but little use in the accumulation of money. The faculties of the great universities possess in the aggregate <laughs> practically every form of general knowledge known to civilization. Most of the professors have but little money. They specialize on teaching knowledge, but they do not specialize on the organization or the use of knowledge. Knowledge will not attract money unless it is organized and intelligently directed through practical plans of action to the definite end of accumulation of money. <laughs> Lack of understanding of this fact has been the source of confusion to millions of people who falsely believe knowledge is power. It is nothing of the sort. <laughs> knowledge is only potential power. It comes, it becomes power only when and if it is organized into definite plans of action and directed to a definite end. If you didn't realize, right when I said this, a bookmark fell out of my book in another page. You couldn't see it, but it happened. <laughs> this missing link and all systems of education may be found in the failure of educational institutions to teach their students how to organize and use knowledge after they acquire it. Many people make the mistake of assuming because Henry Ford had but little schooling, he was not a man of education. Those who made this mistake do not understand the real main meaning of the word educate. The word is derived from the Latin word educo, meaning to educe to draw out, to develop from within. <laughs> Educate means to develop from within, that's crazy. An educated man is not necessarily one who has an abundance of uh, generalized, general or specialized knowledge. An educated man is one who has so developed the faculties of his mind he acquires anything he wants, <laughs> or is equivalent without violating the rights of others. <laughs> the ignorant man who made a fortune, this is the last one and then I'm gonna let y'all go. <laughs> During the First World War, a Chicago newspaper published certain editorials in which, among other statements, Henry Ford was called an ignorant pacifist. Mr. Ford objected to the statements and brought suit against the paper for li libeling him. When the suit was tried in the courts, the attorneys for the paper pleaded justification and placed Mr. Ford, Mr. Ford himself on the witness stand <laughs> for the purpose of proving to the jury he was ignorant. The attorneys asked Mr. Ford a great variety of questions, all of them intended to prove by his own evidence why he might possess considerable specialized knowledge pertaining to the manufacture of automobiles. 
he was in the main ignorant <laughs> mr four was plied with such questions as the following who was benedict arnold how many soldiers did the british send over to america to put down the rebellion of 1776 in answer to the last question, Mr. Ford replied, I do not know the exact number of soldiers the British sent over, but I have heard it was a considerably larger number than ever went back. <laughs> Finally, Mr. Ford became tired of this line of questioning, and in reply to a particularly offensive question, he leaned over, pointed his finger at the lawyer, who had asked the question and said, if I should really want to answer the foolish question you have just asked or any of the other questions you have been asking me, let me remind you, I have a row of electric buttons on my desk and by pushing the right button, <laughs> I can summon to my aid men who can answer any question I desire to ask concerning the business to which I am devoting most of my efforts. Now, will you kindly tell me, why should I clutter up my mind with general knowledge for the purpose of being able to answer questions? when I have men around me who can supply any knowledge I require. <laughs> there certainly was good logic to that reply. That answer floored the lawyer. Every person in the courtroom realized it was the answer, not of an ignorant man, but of a man of education. <laughs> any man is educated who knows where to get knowledge when he needs it and how to organize the knowledge into definite plans of action. Through the assistance of his mastermind group, Henry Ford had at his command all the specialized knowledge he needed to enable him to become one of the wealthiest men in America. It was not essential he have this knowledge in his own mind. So we're going to stop it right there just because I'm that dude. And if you couldn't realize that just by reading those few pages to y'all, y'all could see it better than I could see because all I saw was the words on the page. Y'all saw me, bro, like, damn, long video. But, yeah, man, you saw me, man. You saw how excited I was getting. You could see it, bro. I was looking like I was back into a female or something, bro. Like, I was better get some cutty. You seen that look? Bum boy! Bum boy! Bum boy! You want to say some behind the camera Jamaican? The camera's on me. All right. Peace out, y'all. I was just... Uh...